Hey YouTube family, Testosterone RN here, and I'm going to talk to you about a device that you can use to protect yourself and protect your family during illness outbreaks or emergency events. It's cheap, it's efficient, and it's easy to use. Let's check it out. So what am I here to teach you about today? Well, I want to teach you about surgical masks. And at first you might think, eh, it's a surgical mask. You put it on, no big deal. But before you click away and change to another video, let me ask you a few questions. Did you know that there's differences between these two? And not just how they look, how they work. Did you know there's a proper way to put these on? Did you know that this one will filter out certain diseases that this one won't? Do you know that in order for one of these to be effective, you should probably have it fit tested? What does that mean? Did you know that there's a contraindication to wearing some of these masks, such as having a beard that renders them ineffective? And what would you use in the event you had a beard to effectively filter out particulate and other diseases? Well, that's what I'm here to teach you about. So this is a standard surgical mask. Pretty simple. It's got two loops on the side for your ears and it's got pleats in it when you pull it apart and it makes it wide enough to fit your to fit your face. All right. This is effective at filtering out droplet particles. Okay, so when people are in the hospital and they have a disease such as influenza, um, it's not fine particulate or fine um, aerosolized virus particles or bacteria that's being emitted into the air. They're larger droplets that are, are needed to infect people with influenza. So if they're influenza, they get put in droplet precautions. This is a mask that would be just fine for that. Okay, You don't need to really filter out air. You're just trying to block droplet nuclei from being inhaled through your nose or your mouth right and then of course you want to probably wear a mask or something to protect your eyes those are mucous membranes and that's another point of entry for things like influenza all right now you can't really see there's a bar in here all right that you mold to your nose all right and I'll show you one on this mask Okay, this is a different mask. I'll tell you about this in a minute, but you can see there's a bar here too. All right. Now the trick is when you're putting these on and you form this bar to the bridge of your nose, you don't pinch it up and crease it, right? Because then you leave an air gap where it's not formed around your face. All right. That's the most efficient and effective way to wear one of these. Okay. So um, this will probably help block some dust maybe or particulate it's, it's probably better than nothing so if you had a bunch of these in a backpack in your car so wherever you were you had something like this that'd be fine but but mostly this is going to be utilized for diseases so if there's an outbreak an epidemic or pandemic whatever you want to call it um, of influenza um, or some other um, virus that can be filtered out through droplet precautions, through droplet measures with a standard surgical mask because not all viruses can be with this. You have to go up a step higher to this other mask I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But if it's something that can be that you can utilize this for, this is just fine uh, and this will this will prevent you from inhaling a bunch of mist and cough, you know, particles from coughing and stuff that people are emitting in the air in crowded areas like um, airports on a bus you know, public transportation, things like that, office space. All right. So to put this on, what I like to do first is I like to pull the pleats and expand it. All right. And get it ready for my face. Then I grab the loops, put it around my ear, put it around my other ear, pull this down. You see how much more of your face it covers once it's expanded. And then I just gently form this around the bridge of my nose into my cheekbones here your maxillary bones all right all right and you see it covers a decent amount it covers up to the side of my cheek the middle, about the middle of my cheek here all right and that's a good way to prevent you know acquiring disease in public all right and if there was some dust in there like you know 9/11 um, when the Twin Towers came down or something like that. This is better than nothing, okay? Not what you would want for dust particulate though, right? If you had something better to choose from like the other mask I'm gonna show you in a minute. So let me take this off here. Something you should know about these masks 
um, this one and the other one, okay? Any type of mask you put on is going to restrict your breathing. So if you have issues with um, high blood pressure, um, congestive heart failure, other cardiopulmonary functions, issues, asthma, things like that, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema thing. Okay, this is going to probably be contraindicated for you guys. And if you have a question about whether you can use this or not, or not without hurting yourself, talk to your physician. Just say, hey, you know, I want to be prepared in case there's a disease outbreak or some type of emergency event. I'm packing a bag. Is it safe for me with my conditions to wear one of these masks? Because there are people that should not be wearing these, and it's a very common thing. All right? So, uh, keep that in mind. All right. This is an N95 mask. All right. Um, N NIOSH, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, N95 because it filters out 95% of particulate. If you have the rat one, the rat size that's fitted to your face. All right. So in healthcare, um, we have an employee health sector, right, that helps fit test you for an N95 mask and find the right size for you because these come in different sizes. I don't know if the size is on this one or not. I don't think it's actually on here. Um, it'll be on a box though. Okay, so this is made by 3M and uh, I think the other one's made by 3M as well. There's other makers that make these things and you can pick these up fairly cheap. You can find them online, on Amazon, blah, blah, blah. All right, but you should be fit tested to wear one of these. Okay, now this is more restrictive of your breathing than the surgical mask, okay? Because the surgical mask is a lot thinner. This is thicker. It's got more padding. It's going to filter out more particulate. This is used for diseases like people with tuberculosis, people with measles, things that need to go in what's called airborne precautions. They go on a room with negative air pressure to keep the air inside the room instead of being blown out into the hall. And nurses and medical staff who go into those rooms need to wear these. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're around people who might have tuberculosis, or measles, all right, and you don't have um, contraindications to wearing these, any type of uh, comorbidities, any health concerns, such as the ones I've mentioned earlier, um, this is a better option, okay? Does this filter out fumes? No, okay, this is not, uh, you know, anything that'll filter out any type of gas, okay? There are some like that out there, they're going to be a lot more expensive, okay? For the sake of this video, I'm keeping it simple and teaching you basics. Okay, so again, there's a bar here. Now, the way this one works, okay, to put this on easy, you have two straps here. You have a top and a bottom. You grab both at the same time. Grab it with your hand. It's kind of funky, and you're just going to pull these over your head like this. Okay? One goes on the top. One goes on the back, on the bottom. All right. Now this is probably a little small for me, and I wouldn't wear this anyway, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you're going to take the bar, form it around your face. Okay? Now, when you fit these, and I used to fit test people for these, you always want to look underneath the chin here, all right, and see how well it fits. If it overlaps too much and there's a big air pocket, all right, it's not going to filter out everything effectively. You want to see how it lines up on the sides of the cheeks, on the top here. Do they form it to their face correctly? All right, and you can tell when you put this sucker on that it's a lot harder to breathe. You're going to work a lot harder, and that's why it's important not to wear one of these if you have any cardiopulmonary issues and you haven't been checked out or approved to wear one of these by your physician, okay? Anyhow, so again, tuberculosis, measles, uh, probably Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, maybe SARS, I can't remember about SARS. Um, let me take this off here. All right, well actually let me show you one more thing. Okay, why would I not wear this, right? This is supposed to be a really good tight-fitting respirator. I have a beard. I'm not gonna seal here effectively. All right, now I don't have one of these, and when I have one ordered and when I get it in, I'll make another video of it. It's called a PAPR, P A P R, Power, Powered Air Purifying Respirator, okay? And those are for guys that have beards. 
right? Or people who, you know, can't get fitted with one of these very well, right? Because of face shape or whatnot. All right, and so what a PAPR is, a, a power air purified, re purifying respirator, right? It's essentially a mask and it has a tube that goes to it to a motor and battery pack that fits on your belt. And it puts a positive pressure on your mask that blows out and keeps particulate from entering, okay? And that's the option for guys like me who are nurses or doctors who have to treat people with TB and we don't want to shave. Okay, so that's another option. Now, the problem with those are they're a lot more expensive, obviously. All right, you're looking at a few bucks versus the cheapest one I found by 3M so far was like $75, and the reviews on it weren't that great. Um, you typically, you're going to be looking in probably the 250 to 300 for a decent baseline model up to $1,000, right, depending on how fancy you want to go and, and how particularly you are with your equipment and uh, its effectiveness and quality. So um, if you want to go the N95 mask route and you don't have contraindications to it, 3M also makes um, a fit testing kit, okay? And this kit has like a, a bag that goes over your head with a window so you can see the person, okay? And it has two solutions. Um, of saccharin, a 5% and I think a 10% or something like that, or 1% and a 10%, okay? And so you put the bag over their head without the mask on at first, you spray the weaker the solutions in, you make sure that they can taste it when they breathe in through their mouth, not their nose, okay? If they can taste it, then you can fit test them using that method. Now there's other higher dollar methods for fit testing, okay? This is a cheap cost effective manner of doing it at home if you wanted to do it, okay? so. You know, you put the solution in this nebulizer, you spray it in the hood, see if they breathe in, if they can taste it, all right, they can taste it, and then you take the hood off, you pick the mask that you think they can wear or that'll fit their face well, have them put it on, put the hood back over, get the other nebulizer, right, put the stronger solution in, spray it in the hood, and then you have them breathe in through their mouth while wearing the mask, okay? And then you want to do something like, have them turn their head A, B, C, D, talking or counting, you know, saying their ABCs or something like that while they're moving their head around. Big exaggerated movements up and down, you know, big breaths in. And if they can taste it, that's not the right size mask for them. It doesn't fit well. Or they've pinched the bar at top. Or it's not fitting well under here. All right? Things to look for. All right? But if they can't taste it, then you're good. All right, now a little trick about that. You don't want them to be chewing gum, eating candy, or have eaten food, you know, 15, 30 minutes before that because then they won't be able to taste the saccharin uh, that's being nebulized into the, into the hood. So those are your options. Once I get the papper in, I'm going to um, show you how to put it on and teach you more about it, all right? So again, surgical mask, standard. Uh, Infections that utilize big droplets to infect people, right? This is perfect, right? Bunch of people coughing, it's not a bad option, okay? You want to filter out smaller um, particles, tuberculosis, measles, this is the way to go, all right? Also, <clears throat> might not be a bad thing to have in your car. 9-11, Twin Towers came down. A lot of people had pulmonary issues because you know, they're around all that particulate that was just emitted into the air and they didn't have masks on. If you have a mask, you can filter a lot of that out, protect damage to yourself. Something else, Homeland Security um, partnered up with the CDC and they, you know, made recommendations um, to teach nurses certain things. And I, I attended some classes about emergency preparedness. One of the reasons they recommend an N95 mask is for um, dirty bombs or nuclear events things like that, where radi radioactive particulates emitted in the air, right? This doesn't just protect your lungs, okay? It also protects you from getting things in your mouth. And when you swallow those things, they enter your digestive tract, okay? There's lots of ways for radiation to hurt you, but if you obviously ingest something, all right, it sits in your alimentary tract for quite some time, you know, and you're going to be emitting radiation from the inside out, as well as breathing, right? So it's another good reason to have one of these things. 
at least I feel it is. Anyhow, I hope you learned something today. Uh, feel free to leave comments in the comments section or ask questions if there's something I didn't answer, and I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. Stay informed. Be prepared. Hey, I bet you, you thought you got rid of me. Wrong. Sorry. Uh, one more thing before you click out of this video. I mentioned certain diseases um, needing certain types of isolation, droplet, or airborne. And how would you know, right? If you know flu is going around or if you know measles are going around or some other disease, how would you know which mask is right? You know, you probably wouldn't. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys a link in the description for a thing called HICPAC. All right, and this is a standardized list that infection preventionists like myself utilize every day in the hospital to determine what types of isolation that patients should go into depending on what diseases they're infected with. So I'll leave that in the description. That way you can download it or print it out and you, it's an easy reference guide. You can flip through it and say, oh, tuberculosis, airborne, measles, airborne, RSV, contact droplet, okay? And I'll, I'll leave some information about isolation stuff in the description as well, so that way you can learn that and learn to incorporate that into your preps. Thank you.